I trust that the ceramic trauma plate I'm wearing will stop a 357 Magnum round traveling at 490 meters per second. I trust myself not to move, not to flinch. I trust my teammates. I trust my teammates. I trust my teammates. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, when you just can't get into What's going on everybody, Sloth here, hope you're having an awesome day, and welcome to my guide of Rook. Now just a quick overview of the video, we're going to first take a look at Rook's optimum loadout, then we're going to take a look at how to use his gadget effectively, and then finally we're going to take a look at what to do in a typical round when playing as Rook. Jumping right into it, Rook is a 3 armour, 1 speed, defensive operator, hailing from the French Special Forces, the GIGN. Rook has access to a wide array of primary weapons, the first of which being the P90. Now the P90 is a submachine gun that does 22 damage per shot, has a fire rate of 970 and a capacity of 50 in the magazine. The second gun that Rook can choose to use is the MP5. Now the MP5 does 30 damage per shot, has a fire rate of 800 and a capacity of 30 bullets in the magazine. For Rook's third and final choice of primary weapons, he has access to the SGCQB shotgun. Now this shotgun does 53 damage, it has a pump action fire rate. Low point, low point and a capacity of seven in the magazine. Now, out of these three primary weapons, only one can prevail, but luckily for us, that's a pretty easy choice because the MP5 is an incredible weapon in Rainbow Six Siege. Doc also has access to these weapons, and for Doc, the MP5 is the one I recommend, and for Rook, it is no different because the MP5 is an incredible weapon on this game. It is very, very stable, and probably one of the most consistent weapons on the game in both attacking and defending operators. So there's something about the weapon, I don't know what it is, I can't big it up anymore, but it, it's an incredible weapon that's really easy to get a handle on the recoil because there practically is none. Plus you can attach an ACOG scope to it, which just makes the weapon even better. Because it's so stable, it just becomes like a laser beam. Fucking laser sights. So in terms of what attachments I recommend running with the MP5, I've just mentioned one there. I recommend putting on the ACOG scope because it allows you to see very clearly outside of the map if you are going for spawn peaks, but also it just makes the MP5 a bit of a headshot machine. I also recommend putting on the vertical grip because why not improve that stability. And also I recommend finally adding on the flash hider as that is going to give your bullets a slightly tighter spread when firing the weapon in a burst mode. Now you don't actually need to select the weapon into burst mode, you can merely just tap the trigger and it's going to help you with controlling that recoil. Rook also has two options when it comes to his secondary weapons. He has access to that the LFP 586 now this is basically your typical magnum it does very heavy damage but it's kind of hard to control and there's not a lot of bullets in the magazine his next option is the P9 now this is my preferred option whip a silencer on this to take care of their meddling cameras but I recommend the P9 purely because it's just a bit more stable and there's a lot of ammo in the magazine for me it's just a little bit more consistent and comes in clutch and finally for Rook his secondary gadget he has the option to choose between the deployable shield and the impact grenade. Now this is a toss up between what your team kind of needs. If your team doesn't need any deployable shields, so therefore you don't need any, you obviously aren't going to need to pick it unless you want to pick it for yourself. I personally do tend to like running with the impact grenades because I do find that they come in handy in a few different situations in terms of when you want to destroy surfaces to get a better line of sight on an enemy or to try and deal with some riot shielders. So I recommend going with the impact grenades but it do, definitely does depend on what your team needs in the situation. So don't be afraid to pick up a deployable shield if it is needed. Now I know it's not very flashy and it's not very exciting but Rook's gadget, the armor pack, is probably one of the most useful gadgets in all of Rainbow Six Siege. There is no reason not to pick Rook on a defensive round purely because it basically gives your team a bit more health and it allows every every member of your team if they don't get hit in the head to go into the down but not out phase therefore it makes rook's gadget the armor pack incredibly useful so just an overview if you don't know what rook's armor pack does rook basically has one armor bag he's allowed to drop once per round when he drops the bag it's full of bulletproof armor and it basically allows his team to pick them up. If your team do not pick up all of Rook's armor plates and you go down and then you get revived, you are able to pick up another plate and you are gonna get the benefits of it in terms of the reduced damage that you're gonna take. 
but you are not going to get that benefit to go in down but not out again. You only get that once per round. So please bear that in mind if you are thinking about picking it up again to get that benefit. So the way this gadget works, like I've just explained, it basically, once you put it on to your operator, depending if they are light, medium or heavy armor operators to start off with, it's going to give the operator that you're using slightly more health. So they're going to take slightly less damage from the enemy bullets. Usually equates to about one extra bullet you can take. In terms of headshots, you're always going to die from one bullet to the head in Rainbow Six Siege. That's just, you know, the, the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. Um, but the other big benefit of the armor pack is the fact that it allows you to go into the down but not out stage every time if you are getting hit into the torso or to the legs. Now, this means that Rook is great when paired with Doc because obviously people are going to be going down a lot more frequently. And because Doc's able to revive people from further distances, it obviously makes them a bit of a dynamic duo. In terms of how to use Rook's armor pack, it's relatively straightforward. All you can do is press your gadget button to deploy it. And once it's deployed, that's it. The only thing left to do is try and make sure that all of your teammates do pick it up. Sometimes they are going to be a bit reluctant to do it. Hal knows why. All it does is help you. But sometimes your teammates aren't going to want to pick it up. So in that situation, if they don't, the enemy team is able to pick up Rook's armor pack. So sometimes, if you've got time to, think about destroying the armor bag just so the enemy team can't pick it up. But it's very rarely a problem and you'll very rarely see the enemies getting into that situation. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. But it is something to bear in mind. Now let's take a look at how to play Rook in a typical round. First things first, you're going to spawn in and you're going to want to place down your reinforced walls and drop your armor pack. And try and make sure as many of your teammates pick it up as possible. And don't forget to pick it up yourself. Then what I'd commonly like to do is go for a spawn killer's rook because the MP5 is so good. I'm very confident in its ability and I'm very confident at trying to take people out from range. And that's why using rook for spawn peaks is so good. Also, if you do die, it's not going to be a huge detriment to the team because rook, once he's placed his armor pack down, it is a passive ability. So therefore, you don't necessarily need to be alive and you're not going to have a huge impact on your team if you die compared to another defensive operator like Smoke who gets more valuable the later the round goes on. Let's say at this point I've just attempted the spawn peak. Whether I've been successful or not, if I'm still alive, I like to drop back a bit, not inside the objective room, but I like to hover around the objective room and I'm never a stone's throw away from it. Because with Rook, I feel like you should be at the forefront of the big firefight and be on the front line of the defense. So therefore, I like to stay within rooms very close by to the objective room or sometimes in the objective room. But I feel like I want to be at the front line of the firefight because like I said, the MP5 is so good. I want to try and take out as many attackers as possible before they can get close to the objective and take out the other valuable members of my defensive team. Now, I definitely don't recommend roaming as Rook. I know some people do, but because he has got three armor, he's so loud when he's running around the map. Your enemies are going to be able to hear you from a mile off plus there are so many better defensive roaming operators now in the game that I just don't really think Rook fills that role as effectively as some of the other operators do. So to sum up, I recommend spawning in, placing your reinforcements down, placing your armor bag down and then going for a spawn peak whether successful or not drop back to the safety of the objective room or just around it and try and be at the front line of the defense and try and disrupt the enemy attack as best as possible by taking as many of the opposing attackers out as possible. But that's basically been it for my guide on Rook. I know it's short and sweet, but I hope I've covered some things in there for you new players to take value from. I hope you've enjoyed the video and without further ado, guys, have a great day.